This is the trial balance from the 2014 Higher Level Junior Search Paper 2. And there are a few observations we can make about the typical Junior Search trial balance. Remember that the purpose of a trial balance is to check the arithmetic accuracy of your work. Will the total debits match the total credits? If they do, you can be sure that your balance sheet will balance in the end. It doesn't mean you haven't made any mistakes. But you can do a set of final accounts and balance sheet that will work out. So some observations from this here. Some of these accounts have debit balances and others have credit balances. And it's useful to remember that accounts that have debit balances are either assets, losses, expenses, or costs. Alec, assets, losses, expenses, and costs. For example, the assets here would be buildings, motor vans, the cash in the till, the debtors who owe us money. So looking at this here, we have four assets. Again, their debit balances, the buildings, the motor vans, the cash and the debits. They're the assets. We don't have any losses up here. For example, the PL balance of 85,000 euro, if that were a debit balance, which it's not here, but if it was a debit balance, that would actually be a loss left over from last year, but it's a credit balance, so it's profit left over from previous years. So we have no losses up there. We have expenses, um, wages, insurance, the interest on the loan. We've got three expenses up there. And the costs, purchases, cost of buying goods, the opening stock, that's the cost of the goods left over from last year. Import duties or customs duties are cost. Remember you get maybe four costs in your trading account. You'd have opening stock and purchases and maybe carriage inwards or import duty, customs duties. So the debit balances up there are either assets, losses, expenses or costs. The credit balances then, the credit balances will be liabilities, Gains are sources of income. Legs, LGS. Liabilities, amounts of money that you owe to people. For example, you could say that the firm owes its shareholders the 85,000 euro worth of profit left over. It owes its suppliers, its creditors, 18,000. It owes the bank 6,000 on an overdraft. It owes the bank 80,000 on the loan. And you could say it owes its own shareholders 280,000 because that's the amount they invested in share capital. Strictly speaking, the liabilities are the creditors, the overdraft and the loan. And you don't really get to pay back your shareholders. I'm using the term liability loosely there. But it would be fair to say that we owe our shareholders the leftover profit and the amount they invested, the share capital. There are no gains up there. Gains would be things like, you know, bad debts recovered maybe or uh, discounts received. But we do have sources of income. Our main source of income is always sales. And we have rent receivable is 16,000. So we have two sources of income up here. So the accounts that have debit balances are either assets, losses, expenses, or costs. And the accounts that have credit balances are either liabilities, gains, or sources of income. In the question on the board here, we don't have any sales returns or purchases returns. They've already been deducted from your sales and purchases figure before they've done the trial balance, presumably. 
But if they do turn up in a trial balance, well, the sales returns will always be debit because, of course, sales are credit, so they're opposite. Sales returns would be debit. And similarly with purchases, purchases are debit up there. So if you do get purchases returns in a question, it will be the credit figure. Now, if we look further at our information for this question, below the trial balance, we get these so-called adjustments. These are things that you must take into account at the end of the year. Closing stock will always appear down here. And that's the stock left over at the end of the year. Now let's look at rent receivable due. This firm has received rent of 16,000. But that's not the full story. They are owed another 6,000. So that means that although they received 16,000 during the year, they are owed another 6,000. So the rent that relates to the year we're doing is 22,000. There's no point in putting in only the rent we received because this rent of 6,000, we're going to receive it maybe in January of the next year. That rent, although it will be received next year, doesn't belong to next year, it belongs to this year. So we must put into this year the items that belong to the year. So when we're doing this, this question, we must put in rent receivable as an income of 22,000 euros. We'll show that when we're doing the profit and loss account. Wages due. It's the same idea with wages. When we're doing these wages, let's check it out. We spent 70,000 on wages. But we owe another 8,000 on wages. So although we've paid 70,000, it's 78,000 we'll have to charge into our profit and loss account. Because although we spent 70,000, we should have spent 78,000. Yes, those wages due will have to be paid in January of the following year, probably. But when we do pay it in January of the following year, it doesn't belong to next year. Those wages are belong to this year, so although not paid this year, we must include them. So we're going to put, so we will put 78,000 into the profit and loss fund for our wages. And then let's look at our insurance. It says here that we spent 12,800 on insurance. But then when we check the adjustments down the bottom, we see that we prepaid 3,400. It means that 3,400 of that belongs to next year. So we won't charge it to this year's account. Instead, we'll take it out and we'll charge only 9,400 into this year's insurance, into this year's profit and loss for insurance. The calculation for depreciation on buildings will be 5% of 420,000. So 21,000 will be our depreciation on buildings, 5% of 420,000. And we have a peculiar 14% for motor vans, 14% of 170,000. By 14%, 23,800 will be our depreciation on motor vans. Depreciation on buildings, 5% of 420,000, and depreciation on motor vans, 14% of 170,000. And these two expenses will turn up in the profit and loss account. Remember, of course, that all of these adjustments under the trial balance turn up in the balance sheet as well.